Welcome to Fargo Effects. This is Subscriber Builds 12. If you haven't seen the others, there will be a link at the end of this video to that playlist so you can check them out. And also, if you are interested in contributing to Fargo Effects Subscriber Builds, uh, the email is right up here. And you can just send me a few pictures of some of your work and uh, include a little description, maybe a description of the work, a little bit about yourself. And also remember that builds could be really a variety of things. Most of what we've done has been uh, blacksmithing related, uh, you know, metal work, maybe a little bit with woodwork, but I would definitely take a look at other DIY type projects as well. So with that, we'll jump right into it. First up, we have Alex. He is 16 years old and just started blacksmithing last year. He built his own charcoal forge and recently upgraded to a homemade propane forge that he welded together. This is the first knife that he made with his new forge, and uh, he said it's made with 1094 steel, walnut handle, brass pins, and a small amount of file work on the spine. Anybody that's actually tried to do file work like this, this is tremendous work. When you can get flowing lines like that, that really organic look, you know that a lot of planning went into it, and a lot of work went into it to get that really nice, symmetrical, uh, you know, flowing lines. I, I think this is tremendous work and it's inspiring to me and I'm sure it will be to many of our viewers. So thank you very much for sharing this with us. Great work on this knife. Absolutely love the file work along the spine. And uh, you know, if you wanna share more work with us in the future, by all means do so. For one, I'd love to see those forges that you've made. It would be interesting to see some images of those uh, you know, accompanying a, a future submission. Thanks again for sharing this with us. Excellent work and keep it up. Next, we go to Hungary. This was submitted by a 14-year-old knife maker and blacksmith named Bensa. Now, I should qualify that by saying that I think that's his first name, uh, because if I understand correctly, in Hungary, the, the surname comes first, and then the given name would come second. Uh, so I may have made a mistake there, and uh, he can correct me if I'm wrong. One of the greatest things about having a YouTube channel is having supporters and viewers from all over the world and getting to know a great variety of people. And I really consider that a privilege. So by all means, if I you know, mispronounce someone's name or uh, you know, spell something wrong or whatever, by all means, feel free to correct me. But anyway, getting back to the work, uh, he says that he started making knives almost a year ago and he shared quite a few images with us here. And I am really impressed with the quality of the workmanship that has gone into this. Uh, as those of you know who've been following the channel, I've been doing blacksmithing, knife making type projects for about a year and a half. But before then I did a lot of other you know, projects, working with my hands, working with power tools. It is absolutely astonishing to me that a young man like Bensa, 14 years old, can come along and pick up a craft like this and in a very short period of time, a matter of months, be producing workmanship of this quality. So fantastic work here. I love the variety, love the different materials. You know, the quality of the workmanship that went into these pieces is just tremendous. So thank you so much for sharing this with us. You know, if this is a craft that you remain interested in and you spend years developing your craft, I can't even imagine what you'll be doing next year, two years, three years down the road. So fantastic work. Thanks again for sharing it. And if you ever want to share more of your work with us, I will definitely look forward to it. From Hungary, we go to France. This comes to us from Pierre. He is 16 years old, and he did this work for his father's birthday. He says this came from a random piece of steel that he found at his grandparents' place, and his original plan was to build this out of rebar, uh, but he did some experiments with the rebar that he was going to use, and he found out there really wasn't enough carbon for a proper heat treat. Now, the forge that's pictured here, uh, he said his father bought that for him a few weeks ago and he's really made great use of whatever materials he has available to him. This picture here with the pipes in it, that's what he's been using for an anvil. It sounds like he started out on a shoemaker's anvil, but eventually that one broke. So he's been using these pieces of pipe for an anvil. Pierre, I really like this Sirdashi. Uh, for anybody that's been watching the channel, I've done a few of these myself. It is one of my favorite projects to do, and really one of the more practical knives that a person can have in their shop, I think especially for woodwork, but also just as a general utility knife, I really like the Kiridashi style, and I think you've done a great job with this. I also want to call attention to that leather wrap. You know, one thing about the Kiridashi is that because they tend to be very slim, it can be difficult to get a good grip on them, but this leather wrap you've put on there looks fantastic. I think that's a great grip for a Kiridashi. So thanks again for sharing this work, Pierre. And that is almost it for today, but I am going to share one more. Uh, this is from somebody who wanted to remain anonymous for now. He's working on a YouTube channel, and when it's ready, I think he kind of wants to make the announcement then. Uh, so we'll leave his name out of it, but he just shared this one image uh, of a knife that he's been making from a file, 
And I thought this would be a fun one to end on, first of all, because I think it's very well done. And then secondly, for anyone who doesn't know, when you start getting into knife making, it can be challenging to find materials that you can really practice on. So it's nice to be able to get a hold of some steel that's not expensive, but is still good quality steel. And older files are a great source of steel for that purpose. And of course they're also fun because they have that texture and there's always going to be some of that left. And I really like that because it tells a story, you know, it gives the history of this piece of steel and it tells a little bit of that story of how you made it. And then of course the other thing, if you'd prefer not to put like say a wooden handle on or something, because that file has that good grippy texture, this is actually a really good way to make a very simple knife. It has a lot of character to it and fits well in the hand. So thank you for that submission. Thanks to everybody who submitted stuff. And I am going to add a quick note. I've actually received a lot of submissions over the last few weeks. So there will be a, a bunch more subscribers to be featured. I try to limit these to about three or four per video because I want to make sure to be able to give a little bit of time and a little attention to each of those that are taking their time, you know, to share their work with us. So for those of you that have been waiting a while, you know, if you submitted work, let's say a couple of months ago, that probably means I missed it. So absolutely feel free to send a reminder to me uh, or maybe resubmit that email and leave a comment below because I really find all of this work inspiring and I really want to make sure that your work gets featured. So thanks again to everybody for submitting. Thanks for watching the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I would love to have you. And also, if anybody wants to contribute directly to the channel, I do have a Patreon link, so I'll put that up at the end here. And with that, I will just say whoever you are, whatever you're doing, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next video.